what's that? You'd like to stay, but you got to go? Well, no problem. Here you are. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, and the New York Times bestseller in health, The Ebola Survival Handbook, as well as the designer of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a fun and challenging gift for Christmas or anytime you want to get the whole family together. This is America's favorite squawk box TD bird, and this guy, well, he needs no introduction. As a physician, my main focus is keeping people healthy. Given the availability of modern medical care and sanitation techniques, my job is easier than it was for my predecessors a hundred years ago. Like many folks in today's society, though, I have been spoiled by high technology. Most feel that good health is just something that's due to them, that they don't have to think about it any more than they would their next breath. Yet in uncertain times, can we be so sure that our system for disposal of human waste will always be in place? When our infrastructure is working, we generally are able to provide fresh, clean water for drinking and provide food for the table that's unlikely to be contaminated. We also have ways to flush waste from our immediate surroundings. When that infrastructure is damaged, we will be easy prey for infectious disease. One only has to look back to the earthquakes in Haiti and the cholera epidemic afterwards to know that this is true. A growing number of people are now storing food for use in tough times. A few are providing for the common defense. And to their credit, many are also putting away medical supplies and learning skills to deal with injuries and common medical complaints. Few, however, have given a great deal of thought to how they will maintain a sanitary environment for their family in times of trouble. When electric power is lost due to a storm, water utilities can't operate the pumps that maintain water pressure in the pipes that travel to your home. This pressure is one way water utilities ensure that your water is free from harmful bacteria. When the pressure is lost, a boil water order is established by the local authorities. In our neck of the woods, lessons have been learned the hard way by various hurricanes. Therefore, human sewage may be a big problem in the aftermath of a storm or some other disaster. If the water isn't running, a community without a ready supply is going to have a nightmare on their hands after as little as three days. Most people are clueless as to what appropriate planning is with regards to simply flushing a toilet. After filling whatever porcelain options you'll have, you might wind up picking a room where you'll do your stuff and your home will be uninhabitable in less than a week. Here's where some simple planning pays off. If you have access to water, even water unfit to drink, you can have a working toilet by filling the tank with water before flushing or by pouring a couple of gallons directly into the toilet bowl afterwards. This will trigger the siphoning action of the plumbing and send your excrement on its merry way. This works well if you have a septic tank, although it may not last forever. If you have municipal sewer lines, you have a line known as a lateral that goes from your home to the sewer main. Find out if the sewer main is down or not. If it is down or blocked, the act of flushing the toilet will eventually back up sewage into the rest of your plumbing. This is called backflow. There are backflow prevention valves that can be installed or might already be there in your home. Try to find out if you have them already. So how would you deal with human waste when you have no water to spare for the purpose? If you're in your home, empty your toilet as much as possible, then place two layers of garbage bags, the sturdier the better, inside and lower the lid to hold them in place. Once you've done your duty, place some sand and some bleach solution over the waste. This will help deodorize. If you're a cat person, you might have a head start if you have some kitty litter stored away. After several uses, it's going to be clear that it's time to dispose of the waste which, guess what, you already have conveniently bagged. It might be wiser to move this bodily function outdoors as our ancestors did. Here's where a five gallon bucket from Home Depot or Lowe's comes in handy. Line it with the same two garbage bags, I hope you've stored plenty of these in your preps, and place your toilet seat, a couple of short length two by fours, or even a commercially produced top called the Luggable Lou, made just for that purpose on top and you're good to go. Use sand, dirt, kitty litter, or even quick lime along with some bleach solution until the bag's about half full or so. 
Of course, there's the outdoor latrine, either single or multiple use. For those on the move, a single hole dug when the need arises will work if covered effectively and some important rules are followed. For the long term, you may want to dig a trench latrine. A trench latrine is basically just that, a trench dedicated to waste that can be utilized multiple times. The dimensions will depend on the length of time it's needed and the number of people in your group. For a small group, maybe 18 inches wide, 24 inches deep, several feet long. Keep the dirt from the trench in a pile next to it with a shovel and make sure you cover up the waste after each use. Consider a longer trench, some kind of partition sheet if your group is big enough to have more than one person utilizing it at a time. A main concern about any latrine or waste deposited in a hole is contamination of the local water supply. Follow these rules diligently when choosing latrine location and waste disposal outside. Don't place a latrine anywhere near your water supply, at least 200 feet away. Disperse single holes over as wide an area as possible and at least 200 feet away from water. Don't place latrines anywhere near where rainwater runoff occurs. Don't place latrines near food preparation or eating areas. Avoid digging single-use holes where others are likely to wander. Holes dug in raised areas will be less likely to cause leaching into the water supplies. Consider areas in sunlight as they heat up the soil and they speed decomposition. Although as a survival medic you may not consider all this to be part of your job description, it really is. You are the chief sanitation officer and it's your duty to make sure that you keep conditions in your retreat as healthy as possible. If you haven't made plans for sanitation, you're not as prepared as you have to be to keep your family healthy in tough times. This is Joe Alton, MD, thanking you for watching this video. Hope to see you soon.